House of Lasers, and welcome to Series 1 of Prepping Your Photo for Laser Engraving. Um, a disclaimer, we are not Photoshop experts, but we do understand what the laser needs to, to achieve a good result. Um, and basically we're just going to walk you through the steps that we use to get to that stage. Um, as you can see, we have two pictures here overlapping, uh, basically showing you our completed project on the right side and the original on the left. Um, you can tell the one on the right has a lot more highlights, a lot more uh, better pronounced shading, just a lot more edge detail. And the laser can't reproduce color, uh, so, so you have to really think of what it is trying to reproduce, and that's edges. It, it, it's only going to reproduce shading. And if, if we can define edges and, and facial features, you're going to get a good result. Um, I mean, if you look at some of the hairs, if you look at the eyebrows, the light white right above the eyelid, uh, you can see his eyelashes are clearly defined, the white above the lips. You're going to have a definite contrast when you're engraving. So how do we get to this point? Um, let's shut this one off real quick. Zoom out. So the first step is really removing the background. If you don't need the background, get rid of it because what you're trying to do is you'll be trying to engrave all of those different scenes. Once you start compensating for the background, you start to lose details in the foreground. So the best thing to do is isolate the, the part of the picture that you want to engrave and focus on that and get the hard lines, get the detail in the edges of, of that part of the photo. This way you're not having the laser compensate for darker backgrounds. Now, now the background's too dark. Um, focus on what you're trying to do. Now what we want to do is crop the photo. And I typically will take either the elliptical or the rectangular marquee tool. Um, once, you, once you lay it out, let's go back a step. Once you, once you have it in a position that you want, if you right click on it, you could either have a hard edge and cut it and crop it out, or you can have a feathered edge. Click on the feathered edge and the radius is basically just going to extend the feather um, or the fade from the edge in. So depending on how, how you want that, you'll just uh, select the, the, the amount. Now you're not going to see that until you actually cut it out. So if I right click again and I do cut and now you can see there, there's a, a line there. So if we get rid of the background, we have a definite fade of the edge. Now we want to remove the rest of this background. So all we have is a white background or a transparent background and his head. So I'm going to go to my eraser tool, right click and it gives me a couple more options. I'm going to use the magic eraser tool. This is a time saver. Um, it, it gets into certain areas or, or areas that you're going to have a really hard time with um, with using like a brush or the eraser tool itself. Uh, like trying to get in here and get rid of all of this will be very difficult to do by hand. Um, this kind of makes quick work of it. And you can change the tolerance of this. So if we go up to the tolerance and do 20, it's going to erase more, but then you start to have other colors being removed uh, that you don't want. So if we go back, uh, we'll keep it at 10. And we're probably going to have to go a little bit lower as well. That's good. Uh, if we go down to 6, uh, and that's much better. We're not removing his hair now. 
and, and this will save you some time in having to clean up everything. Now you're just going to have to go in and, and quickly remove some stuff. And for that, let's see if I can remove a couple more pieces here. All right, so to do that, I go to my eraser tool. Uh, if I right click, I have the type of brush I want. So if I want a soft brush or if I want a hard edge brush, I can also adjust the size. Um, obviously, for getting closer to things, I want to use a little bit smaller brush and just just touching the edges. Now, a huge key to this is doing it in steps. Basically, think of them as save points so that you can go back and undo. So if, for example, if I was doing all of this and I never let off my mouse button, and you know, I've, I've gotten to a certain point where I've done a lot of work and I accidentally get bumped and I go into his face. Now if I go back, all of this work that I just did is gone. So it's important to, to basically click that button and create little save points for your undo. And, and that'll help out a ton. All right, so I'm gonna get this cleaned up and we will pick up right after. Once we have all the background cleaned off, uh, I typically will go in and make adjustments to my canvas. Uh, since I don't need that and that will throw off my alignment, um, when I go to engrave it, uh, it's going to save the entire canvas. So if I have you know two inches above and two inches below, it's going to be really hard to center. So I try to shrink that down the best that I can so that my alignment points are truly the photo and not this huge canvas that I'm working with. Now that might have been a little bit too much, but that's okay. We could fix that. And the size, we'll make it a little bit taller. And that should be good. All right, so now that I have the canvas resized, I'm just going to double check my image size. Um, <clears throat> basically what I've noticed is if the image pixel size is too small, your adjustments for shading and contrast and sharpness uh, don't do a whole heck of a lot. So you, you need the information there to be able to make these adjustments. Um, resolution, resolution I keep kind of low until I'm finished and then I upscale. Um, reason being is the larger the photo and the higher the resolution, the more system resources you use, the slower reaction you're going to get. So uh, I want to get stuff done quickly. So the first thing that I see with this is there's a lot of shadowing on his face and we need to get rid of that. And it may take a couple tries, um, but what we're going to do now is we have to at least select the layer, adjustments, oops, sorry, shadows highlights. So shadows highlights is available in Corel as well, I'm sure other programs, uh, even on your Apple iPhone. And it really does a number in trying to get rid of some of this heavy shading here. So we can go and, and mess around with these slides to see exactly what they do. Um, you know, max them out. See, see how far you can push them before you get to the point of uh, ridiculousness. Highlights are going to add some of the shading back in. Okay, I, I lightened up that side of his face the best that I could with this adjustment. We will go in and try to add some more contrast. This way, some of these lines in his face are more pronounced again. Okay, and we'll go through one more adjustment on 
lighting and see if we can get just a little more depth. Okay. All right, so I'm pretty, pretty happy with the coloring and the contrast of it. Now it's time to sharpen it and really make the edges and um, hairs pop, make them uh, really defined. So if we go to sharpen, and I do, I do two sharpens. I do a unsharp mask. You mess around with these. Adjust them. Throw them. Throw them way out. See exactly what they do. Um, again, push the limits and 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 find out what's going to work. And once you have that that dialed into where you're happy with the result, you can pretty much replicate it on a lot of photos and just do minor adjustments. You won't have to be uh, be playing around with this a whole heck of a lot. You'll you'll know exactly where you need to be for certain types of photos. So if you look at the hair, we're getting better contrast. We're getting more defined lines. We're getting really really crisp edges. You see the new white line above his lip. Uh, that's going to help out a lot when we go to engrave it. Okay, let's do our other. We're going to do a smart mask. Or smart sharpen. And as you can see, some of my parameters are already saved from previous photos. Let's see if we can push this one a little bit further. Give it a second to update. Now that's a little bit too much, so I'm gonna I'm gonna back it down just a hair. Give it a second to catch up. All right, and that's that's better. So I still have a little bit of a concern with the side of his face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my brush tool, and I can choose to lighten, uh, lighten color, and if I right click, I can increase my brush size, and I'm also going to do a soft brush. And that's way too light, so we need to drop the opacity down. Uh, let's do 6%. And now we can just, just lighten this up enough to make a difference. Because uh, sometimes it's really hard to get an overall adjustment. Uh, you know, you go, you go too light over here, and then you have wash out everywhere else. So if I, if I lighten all of this up, it should be good. And then, you know, I lightened it up quite a bit and I also changed the tone a little bit. So what I can do is use my mixer brush and basically all this is doing is dragging uh, the, the colors across the photo. So I'm taking the color from over here and I'm dragging it across ever so slightly and just blending stuff in. Uh, you could also use this to get rid of, like we had a little uh, rosacea here. You can get rid of that. You know, if you don't, if somebody has a pimple and, and you know, in the retouching version of, of this uh, tutorial, uh, I think coming up next, we'll go through some of that stuff too. But I'm really happy with this. I think we have really defined edges and lines. Um, the hairs are really pronounced. These white little streaks are gonna show up well. Uh, so this in my mind is, is done and ready for engraving. My next step would be to change my image size. Uh, if I know what I'm engraving it at, if I'm doing a 5 by 8 then I'll just change it. I will increase my DPI, giving Lightburn or whatever processing software I have the most information as possible. And then I will export as a PNG. 
the PNG is lossless, so you can rescale it without losing a lot of information or distorting. It also will retain transparency, so there won't ever be a um, white background added to this. So you won't have to worry about flipping it to negative and then having that white background engraved as a box. So this is the, uh, the basics that we use. So definitely mess around with this on your own, but the object is going to be getting crisp, clean lines, uh, accentuating uh, facial features, hairs, stuff like that. This way the laser has something to really pronounce when it engraves since we are limited to, to colors uh, or shading with what the laser can do. Guys, I really appreciate you joining me and listening for, uh, for 15, 16 minutes. Uh, subscribe to our channels. This way you know when the next one comes out. Uh, we'll be producing a couple of new ones coming up here shortly. Thanks, guys. House of Lasers. Appreciate it.